Islamic scholars have made a lot of contribution to the field of science and technology. They have made advances in medicine, astronomy, engineering, and many other fields. Many things we use today are linked to Muslim scientists and their ideas. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another FTD Facts episode. My name is Leroy Kenton and for this episode, we're going to be looking at 10 major ways that Muslims contributed to science and how they made life, well, easier or more enjoyable enjoyable for us. So let's begin. At number 10, we have surgery. So check it out. In the field of medicine, Dr. Al Zawari, he got the title of father of surgery. Now Al Zawari, around the year 1000, he published a 1500 page illustrated encyclopedia of surgery that was used in Europe as a medical reference for the next 500 years. So he discovered the use of dissolving cat gut to stitch wounds beforehand because a second surgery had to be performed to remove sutures. He also performed the first cesarean operation and he created the first pair of forceps and he's said to be the inventor of more than 200 tools used in medicine. His book Al Tasrif contains information about various medical diseases and treatments and surgical procedures. Al Tasrif was translated into many different languages like Latin and it actually served as a complete guide for medical students. Moving on to number nine, we have coffee. This is a very interesting one. So who doesn't love coffee, right? Well, the credit for this invention goes to an Ethiopian herder named Kaldi. More than 1200 years ago, people were struggling to stay awake when a herd of curious goats and their watchful master discovered this life-changing substance. So Kaldi, he noticed that as his goats were grazing on the slopes, they became active and excited after eating a particular berry. Kali, he shared his discovery with the abbot of the local monastery who made a drink with the berries and found that it kept him alert through his long hours of evening prayers also. He shared the discovery with other monks and then the word spread and coffee was introduced to the world. Next up on our list, we have the camera, which is also linked to a Muslim scientist, Ibn al-Haytham, who revolutionized the field of optics. He rejected the Greek idea that an invisible light emitted from the eye that caused sight, and instead he stated that vision was caused by light reflecting off an object and entering the eye. So he provided proof of his theory by using a dark room with a pinhole on one side side and on the other side there was a white sheet. So light came through a hole and projected an inverted image of the objects outside of the room on the sheet that was on the opposite side. He called this the camera and it was the world's first camera obscura which of course now leads to the cameras as we know them today. Number seven is universities. The first university was founded by a Muslim woman. In the year 859 a young princess named Fatima al-Firhi, she founded the first degree granting university in Fez, Morocco, and her sister Miriam founded an adjacent mosque. Together, the complex became known as the al Kawarin Mosque, which soon developed into a place for religious instruction and political discussion. It was named the first university in history and provided education on all types of subjects. Along with astronomy, their students studied the Quran, of course, and theology, as well as law, rhetoric, and writing, logic, arithmetic, geography, medicine, you name it, they were studying it. The crazy thing is, it's still in operation more than 1200 years after, and this is definitely a woman who has inspired women all across the world. Number six leads us to the flying machine. You'll definitely be surprised to know that the first person to attempt and succeed in making a flying machine was a Muslim named Abbas ibn Furness. In the 9th century, he designed a winged apparatus loosely resembling a bird, and his most famous trial took place near Cordoba in Spain, where he flew the machine upward for a few seconds before plummeting to the ground and partially breaking his back. Ouch! 
Now, 600 years later, his design inspired the famous Italian artist and inventor Leonardo da Vinci to draw up plans of his own flying machine. And then, of course, we know where that led, and now we have airplanes today. Number five leads us to the tooth brush. So for the first time, the concept of toothbrushes was introduced by Prophet Muhammad, actually. He popularized the use of the first toothbrush around the year 600. Using a twig from the miswak tree, he cleaned his teeth and freshened his breath. Substances similar to miswak are now used in modern toothpaste. All right, guys, at number four, who likes algebra? <laughs> well, yeah, it comes from another Muslim. The word algebra actually comes from the title of a Persian mathematician's famous 9th century treatise, the Kitab al-Jabr wal Muqabala. And then when you translate that, it translates to the Book of Reasoning and Balancing. Al-Khwarizmi moved away from the Greek concept of mathematics, which was essentially based on geometry and introduced some new ideas to it. He systemized the Greek and Hindu mathematical knowledge, introduced a method of counting based on numerals and decimal systems for the first time, and used zeros and introduced the concept of raising a number to a power. So yeah, definitely mathematics, like algebra, very useful to this day, but probably not the most enjoyable subject in school. To me anyways. Now for number three, let's look at maps. So today we have modern technology that helps us travel to any place we like. Load up our phone, Google Maps is right there. But it was actually Muslims that introduced the concept of map. In the seventh century, Muslims were inspired to leave their homes and travel for trade and for religious reasons to explore the world that, of course, they lived on. And they walked different routes and observed people and places, and they shared their encounters with others when they came back back. So first, this was by word of mouth, but with the introduction of paper in Baghdad in the 8th century, the first maps and travel guides were produced. From there, in our number two spot is cleanliness and hygiene. So it's not that Muslims invented being clean and being hygienic, no, but they definitely contributed greatly to the field. In the 13th century, the engineer Al Jazari wrote a book describing mechanical devices, including wudu machines, Machines. So these voodoo machines provided enough water for ablution, which is a Muslim ritual of washing yourself before prayer and things like that. And also it conserved a lot of water. Muslims came up with the concept of soaps by mixing oil with alkali, which is a salt-like substance that was boiled to achieve the right mix, left to harden, and then used in the bathhouse. Al-Kindi also wrote a book of perfumes called the Book of the Chemistry of Perfume and Distillations. His book contained more than a hundred recipes for fragrant oils, salves, as well as aromatic water. The centuries-old perfume making tradition was made possible by Muslim chemists and their distillation methods. They distilled plants and flowers and made perfumes and substances for therapeutic pharmacy. So yeah, we have several contributors there for number two, but we move on to number Number one, we end this episode off with the crank. Muslims have contributed indirectly to modern automatics. The revolutionary crank connecting rod system was first put to use by Muslims. By converting rotary motion to linear motion, the crank enables lifting heavy objects with relative ease. Al Jazari discovered this technology in the 12th century and it spread across the globe like wildfire, leading to everything from the bicycle to the internal combustion engine. So there you have it guys. This was a look at the top 10 major contributions of Muslims to the world of science. Let me know down below in the comment section if I missed anything. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like and also if this is your first time here to FTD Facts, go ahead, subscribe, ring the bell. That way you'll be notified of our daily uploads. So thanks for hanging out with me in another episode. Until next time guys, stay awesome, stay educated, and I'll see you soon.